Good morning again, all you jolly opioid lovers who found things being so unbearable that you turned to the poppy, dreams of the poppy, in the very strange uh, forms that they're delivered to you now by the pharmaceutical industry, actually, and by doctors, by, this, by a corrupted and messed up system. And uh, I'm totally sympathetic with you. I'm very sorry for you. And also, by the way, this is not the first opioid epidemic. The white, the Euro-American white, or rather I like to call us pink people, and I confess to being one of them, but I don't agree with that policy. But for a long time, even all this war on drugs and everything, we have somehow, with all of our billions of dollars given to the Drug Enforcement Agency, we've not been able to keep the heroin out of the hands of people. So we're there just following in the British system in China that they did in the 19th century, where they used opium as a way of addicting an alienated population and one that was too poor and they didn't want to take care of. And basically, it's, kind, it's a kind of chemical warfare by oligarchic elites against the masses. And it's been practiced against the black people, with, and then crack cocaine was the next one, uh, not allowing them to have reasonably healthy marijuana and forcing crack cocaine down their throats. Or alcohol, they're in a fire water, alcohol they use with the Indians. So using uh, chemicals against populations that you're trying to destroy by a certain type of elite is an old strategy. And what is interesting is that now it's gone into the white community who the oligarchy here, by removing the manufacturing jobs from them, uh, has they've destroyed that class, really. They've destroyed the working people. They've destroyed half of the middle class. And by and once they're destroyed, then they don't know what to do. So they, so they want to opioid, opiate them, to have them self-destruct. And therefore, they couldn't somehow stop that corporation in Connecticut, the Purdue Corporation, the same as the chicken. <laughs> same name as the chicken thing. They allowed them to like pump out all this ridiculous amount of opioids and then brainwash doctors that, oh, that's helping people with their, their body pains, etc. Instead of getting them out into a nice exercise or a yoga program. Really. It's a disgrace perpetrated by the very oligarchy that now has taken over the government and is trying to cut all your Medicaid, oh, you people, and all your health care in every, every state and every place in the, in the country. Like the evil Republican governors who were paid by these, but they're not paid by the Republicans. They're paid by oligarchic anarchists. Libertarians means anarchists, government destroyers, treasonous people. Benedict Arnold's, not conservatives. Get that straight. So they've got you all drugged up. But anyway, I don't want to rail about them. I want to talk to you. There's ways you can deal with this thing. First of all, you shouldn't feel bad. I mean, that's why I went, in, I went in a little bit against the, the bosses. This was inflicted upon you by a corrupt system. And, you know... You don't have to be permanently destroyed by it. Some of you may have wrecked your health by now from, from not eating properly or whatever, being homeless, I don't know, being, you know, exposing yourself while completely passed out or stoned out. You know, you, you, but those of you who maintained some reasonable health, you can recover from opioid, opium addiction. It is very possible. There are definite ways that can very quickly cure you from that. The best is Ibogaine and MDMA and psilocybin. These are, the, these are the best. These were ones that the, the evil oligarchs may outlawed with their fake war on drugs. You know, these are, these are entheogenic compounds. They're vision quest compounds. They're used in tribal societies to give people a sense of meaningfulness in life, to allow their consciousness to awaken. They're not addictive because they're, they're heightened awareness rather than dull awareness. So therefore, they're a little bit frightening to people and they need special psychiatric or, you know, curandero, shamanistic application to, for people in more sane societies than ours has become less sane. So there's lots of things you can do. You can improve your health a lot. You can change your diet. Don't eat junk food. Don't buy, don't eat white flour. Don't eat white rice. 
uh, don't eat too much meat, especially hormone and uh, growth hormone injected uh, and, and, and antibiotic injected meat. Don't eat that. And, uh, you know, kill it yourself if you have to eat meat. You know, clean it and, and raise it clean and kill it mercifully, you know. And uh, if you, I mean, I'm, I'm best not to do that, become vegan or vegetarian. But if you have to do that, at least make sure it's not poisoning you, which commercial stuff does. And uh, so that's the first step. That will give you more strength in health to be able to try to make the best of your difficult personal, financial, emotional situation. And then second, you, there are ways of weaning yourself off that if you insist and you vote properly and you insist on getting proper health care, which Obamacare, so-called, which is not called, should not have ever been called Obamacare. It should be called the Affordable Health Care, Affordable Care Act, which is what needs to be developed by real conservative Republicans and real Democrats, not by these oligarchs who are trying to destroy health care so they can make more money predating on you. No. Healthcare is a non, it's not supposed to be a money making thing. It's supposed to be a compassionate thing. It's supposed to be an altruistic thing. Yes, there can be money will be given to people who, by, to healers who will heal people, the people will gratefully give them money. So it will still be a prospering business or profession or calling. But as of basically being the mode of money making, that's no good. That's what's the ruin of the system. That's, that should not be its basic purpose at all. And so, uh, because that healing is a is a is one of humanity's great compassionate activities, and doctors are, who people are called to that profession are great people, but they become they tend to be corrupted, and maybe some corrupt people are attracted, even unfortunately. So. Then there are alternative and complementary medical tradition. There's acupuncture, there's herbal medical traditions, Western ones, there's Asian ones, Ayurveda, Tibetan medicine, uh, there are, Chinese has Chinese herbal medicine, there, there are your vitamin store, you know, your health store, local health stores, they have things of the, from these kind of traditions. The vitamin things are very valuable. The herbal extracts that they have are very helpful to you, can help you deal with these things. When you, you get off a high level of addiction, you need uh, you need um, gradual, you know, uh, cold turkey sort of situations. But and actually, the 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 so-called psychedelic uh, compounds are very valuable with that. In fact, in fact, even after it was all illegal, the great um, Czech doctor Stanislas Graf at Spring Grove, Maryland. For years, he treated with low doses of psychedelics. Uh, he treated many alcoholics and helped them recover. It's very, very available. And apparently, I don't know this particular one, I've never used it, but there's something called Ibogaine from Africa, a root. It's apparently a special virtue in relation to opium because it does something about the nerve endings that are, you know, the excessive nerve endings that your nervous system has created, which then makes pain withdrawal so painful from opium. It actually it plates over those nerves. It has, a, in addition to a consciousness thing, where you see the whole addiction process in your mind and you are strengthened to, to overwhelm it, to, to cope with it. Uh, also, it actually has a chemical effect on the nerve endings that, that, that tones them down so that your withdrawal is much less painful. So, you know, the fake president is is telling you he cares so much and it's an emergency and everything, but he's put no, not a dime. So you know when he doesn't put money, of course he doesn't like to give any money to anybody else but himself in general, as we see, as, as you should have paid attention to before he was elected. He cheated all his suppliers as a builder and so forth, always, his whole time. But he, so he doesn't like to give money in general. And maybe he thinks of the waning amount of money that the government has as he's, his people are destroying it. He wants to get it all himself. I don't know. Certainly he's trying to give himself a Christmas present of a big tax cut, him and McConnell and Ryan, which hopefully we will stop. But um, uh, you, can, you, can, you, you have to step up and do it yourself. You can't wait for him to provide money. You, hopefully there are some Affordable Care Act clinics here and there in good states where the governors accepted the federal 
grants before this current Congress was able to try to cut them off. And hopefully they still have some of their clinics open and some of the very dedicated people working there who can help you to get over the worst stages of trying to come down off the thing. And certainly they should close down the purveyors and the manufacturers of these opioids. They should certainly make them pick them up with funding by penalties like the tobacco companies had to do for the damage that they caused by overproducing them. The Purdue company, for example, in Connecticut and others. So, are there, and there are others. So anyway, on today, Veterans Day, and then you veterans, you know, I'm very happy that there are generals in the Pentagon who are demanding that the Schedule One location of the mind-altering compounds that are used to help overcome post-traumatic stress syndrome and depression and so forth very effectively now in Johns Hopkins in California, in various controlled experimental situations for the moment, but should be much more widely available to you. And they're demanding that they become widely available to you because the statistics of success of overcoming these very, very crippling and deadly um, mental state conditions from the very great suffering that you underwent in these wars that you were thrown into by very cynical people without proper by telling lies, actually, to everybody about how Saddam Hussein had nuclear weapons or about this and that. You know, trying to occupy different countries, which we should not be in the business of doing. It was mis mishandled. It should be the diplom diplomat should be dealing with these kind of people, not, not, not bombs, which they make money on, by the way. You know, it's all money making. It's the worship of money that has ruined this country, you know. So anyway, uh, you know, on Veterans Day, demand yourself, go to California, go to Johns Hopkins, go somewhere and get someone to administer MDMA or psilocybin or something and take a good, in a proper, with proper counseling and take you through the levels of, of stuck memory in your brain of being stuck in this shattering sound or that explosive injury or that terrible thing and demand that you receive that treatment. You can do that. And then, then go outside the ordinary thing to look at so quote unquote complementary medicine in all kinds of dimensions. Learn to meditate, do yoga, demand yoga instruction in the VA hospitals, meditation instruction. Learn to, without any kind of substance to go into your mind because you, when you go, your consciousness produces substances from your brain and your glands that will give you a good situation, actually. You can learn to do that. Be a warrior inside yourself. You, you've proved already you were a great warrior outside. So you, you have the guts and the gumption and the intelligence to be a great warrior about your insides. And you just have to be given a chance to do it. And given the methods that are proven to help you, not ignored, and not given things that don't help you. Okay, so that's my Veterans Day thing.